Hello, welcome to Bomb Kit Stuff, the next video in our U9 build. And in this video, we're just going to look at painting a bit there. It's a little bit of wood deck on the conning tower. Right then, we have um, a little section of uh, deck here that goes on the conning tower um, that we previously cleaned up in, in one of the earlier videos. Um, and this has now been um, primed and it's ready to be painted. So what I'm going to use um, as a base colour is um, deck tan. This is from the new, or relatively new, um, lacquer paints range from, from Tamiya. Um, so this is this bottle has already been pre-thinned um, and I've used um, the, the thinner which has the retarder already in it. So you can buy thinner with or without retarder and you can buy retarder separately. Um, I, I bought the one with retarder in because um, I may use this um, uh, through an airbrush so um, slowing down the drying time which is what the retarder does um, is desirable. So this has already been pre-thinned and, and um, I've given it a good shake for 30 or so minutes. Um, now I must say, um, sorry 30 seconds not 30 minutes, that's a lot of shaking. Um, I must say that the, the wood deck tan in the lacquer paint is several shades darker than the um, acrylic um, deck tan. Um, so I was happy to use that. Let me just get a brush. Okay. So what happens with wood is it has a tendency um, to go grey when exposed to the air over time. So what I want to do is just try and give it a sort of worn weathered look by putting thin coats of paint on. And you'll notice that I'm painting in the direction the wood grain would be. Um, I'm not worried about how even this looks because I'm not necessarily looking for even. If I spray painted this it would look too uniform and I don't want that. So what I'm trying to do is build up little layers of colour that's going to give me that sort of um, weathered look. So this, you know, not sure what sort of wood they would have used. Quite possibly teak, so a sort of a darker, darker wood. And we will have a think about that. But I think I'd like to go sort of paler, um, as the darker wood will look quite strong against the other colours. On the on the boat. Now lacquer paint dries quite quickly, and I've got to say um, I've quite enjoyed using these new lacquer paints for brush painting. I've not tried it yet in my airbrush, um, and I'm not really a fan of Tamiya paints. I know they're well respected in the modelling community, but I never think Tamiya paints brush particularly well. Um, so I much prefer uh, some of the other quality brands like Umbrella or Vallejo for, for brushing. Not forgetting the other sides. So there we go, there's a first look. So you can see the, the grey um, that we've used as a primer is just helping us with that sort of worn, exposed to the elements type of, of look. And the grey will slowly disappear as we build up some layers of colour. I'm 
and by using quite a fine brush um, we're putting little brush strokes in which is just looking like the wood grain a little bit at least This stands proud of the uh, metal structure, so I do need to paint the underside as well. Although visibility of it will be restricted, whatever we do on the top surface of the grating, we need to do on the lower surface. Although arguably it would weather differently because it's not having the footfall and it's shaded from ultraviolet light, so we can be a little bit heavier with the wood colour but effectively the same process you'll notice there's some uh, checked pin marks in there that I've not dealt with um, they're not going to be seen so I'm not worried about them that a minute to do to dry though that is touch dry now um, so I'm now going to use um, again it's a lacquer paint um, this is yellow brown um, Dutch Africa core 1941 uh, and I'm just going to use this to go around the edges to add a little bit of depth in the areas where there's going to be no footfall We will give it um, a, a darker wash as well, but I just want to build up the tone a little bit. So we're going to do the edges of the planks and wherever you wouldn't get any natural footfall. And again, we're going to paint in the direction of the grain. So you can see I'm just doing the very edges there. going to do the same with the inside here so just want it a little darker where footfall's not going to move the grime around and, and sort of remove it. I imagine it, you know, where it's not getting worn effectively. This is only uh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so since we put this um, first coat of paint down. So you can work quite quickly with the lacquer paints. Uh, and it doesn't have to be exact, again we're not looking for uniform in any way. And then what we're going to do is go around and do all the edges. And just darken them up a little bit as well.
So underneath this, we're, we're not getting any footfall. Uh, we're not getting any sunlight. So there's no bleaching going on. So we're going to darken all of this. But because we put the lighter paint down, we're making sure that the colour doesn't behave differently than it has done on the top and it all looks natural and keyed in. It does dry very quickly, this stuff, even with the retarder in. Just go around and do that inside edge. I think when this goes on there is a gap, so the inside edge will be visible. Okay, there we go. So I'm now going to further thin the lacquer paint. So I've basically taken a couple of drops of the paint um, and I'm adding, uh, well I had a couple of drops of thinner um, next to it. Um, and what I'm trying to do is just create something that's a little thicker than a wash. Um, which we're going to go over the top. There we go. So that's um, roughly two drops of paint, three drops of thinner. Uh, and what I want to do is go over the whole top now and key it all in. Uh, hopefully the the uh, brown that we put on the yellow brown will just um, add a little bit of depth on those edges. see how this comes together. Yeah, so it's just deepening the sort of wood effect colour. We're not losing the areas where it's a little darker, where the yellow brown has been. Uh, what's happening is that sort of acting like a pre-shade if you like um, and we're just losing the difference between the first and second layers of paint keying it all in um, dulling down the grey primer that's still coming through and just adding a, a, a bit more dimension and depth to the paint Definitely easier to paint, brush paint, um, the lacquer paint than the acrylic paint. Okay, so what we can see there is that the brown that we've put down has is no longer visible and we've got what appears to be one single colour but we've now got unevenness in that colour which gives us that nice sort of little effect there so I'm fairly happy with that yeah 
So I'm just going to go around and, and do the edges and then um, I'll get back to you with the next job. So uh, next is some panel liner. Um, this is the brown one. Um, always needs a good shake, this stuff. Um, I know this comes with an applicator, um, but I never use the applicator. Well, sorry, I rarely use the applicator um, to apply it to the model. Partly, well, partly because the, the brush thickness isn't always the thickness that I'm looking for, but because um, because the brush is extendable, just like with the glue pots, what happens is the the um, liquid goes up on the inside, and if you knock that on the side of your model, like that, you get a load of uh, paint dumped where you didn't want it. So, uh, yeah, I tend not to do that. Um, so what I do is I decant a bit, I probably put too much out there, I have a tendency to do that. Uh, and then we'll use um, a brush the thickness that I require for the job. Okay, so um, I've got quite a thin brush and what I want to do is try and pick out the um, plank underneath that, that these top planks are attached to. I'm just running the panel liner in between the um, planks there. And we're going to go round this raised detail, which will be painted in in the uh, light grey colour. Once this dries off, it'll actually be quite subtle. But you can see, see the difference it's making. Okay, so I'm going to do the inside edge, but I'm not going to do the outside plank edge. So what's happening is the uh, planks there, um, because we've put the darker paint in between them, it's just making them stand out a little bit um, more than they would have done if we'd left the um, Batten's the same colour. What what I'm going to do with the edges is I'm just going to go in where there would have been a natural line between the two individual planks and paint them in. Like so. So I've just got a couple of those to do. Okay. So last job is just to go around the very, very edge of the planks. Just ever so lightly. And again, this doesn't need to be even. And then we just take the excess off because I just really want the very, very edge done. Imagine no one stood forward of this. When you, there's um, a walk around tour of a U9 um, as a description, not, not with photos, um, which you can find online. Um, and this area is so small that one of them is stood on it. Uh, and the other one has to sit on the hatch rim because there isn't enough space for two of them. Okay. 
Okay, so we've gone a little bit too heavy in one area. So I'm going to get a little bit of white spirit. that down so I'm just gonna clean the brush off a little bit and we're just gonna go in there with the white spirit and just thin that down a little bit and then we can blot it out there we go so we've rectified that And what we're doing now is trying to just put a little bit of a, a worn pattern in there in the centre by thickening the darkness on some of these edge plankings. Just ever so slightly, going from the, the top down. So this is the area I think wouldn't get any footfall. So if we darken that area a bit and then we thin it out towards the edge where we know there would be some footfall. And here we're just dabbing it on. So on camera it looks a lot starker than it does naturally. Clean the brush. And then we can just, if we're not happy, we can just take some white spirit in lift some off or clean it back, whatever you want to do. Just a little bit of patience, but you can rework this till your heart's content. And then if we do the same on this inner edge here. So a bit like we did with the wood brown initially, but we want it to be a bit more subtle now. So only putting tiny amounts on and trying to keep the pattern um, not uniform. It's just playing around and experimenting until you get something that you think looks right and looks natural. If you if you decided that they will have painted these in the light grey, you can have some real fun with um, worn off grey and then wood underneath it and then shading your wood effects and things. Okay. Because it's a bit wet and shiny at the moment, you quite can't quite get the effect. Um, but I'm going to consider that done. I'm going to let it fully dry uh, and look at it with fresh eyes. But I'm happy that we've got an uneven, natural-looking wood effect there that's in scale um, and will look quite nice against the grey of the conning tower. Okay, so the last task is to uh, paint in the uh, light grey areas underneath here and above here. Um, I can't remember whether I've mentioned, and I think I maybe haven't, but I'm using, uh, for the light grey on this, I'm using Life Colours um, German Craigs Marine 
uh, DKM 50, which is uh, pre-war years and early years. Now, my understanding is that they use the same light grey as they did in the in the First World War, so this would be the appropriate grey. I like life colours uh, paints. They have a nice little satin finish to them, which works really, really well on uh, ships. Um, so it's one of my favourite brands of paints uh, for ship modelling. Sprays really well, brushes really well. So what I don't want to do is lose the uh, grimy, worn, mucky effect that we've already put on. So I'm not going to paint the sides. If I wanted the sides painted, I would have painted this first and then painted the lower sections next. Um, a bit like painting raised detail, you always go top down. I used to um I used to do it the other way around. Um, I was always told that when you painted figures, you painted like you were getting dressed, so you did skin first and work your way up. I find the opposite works better for me. And so I tend to do that with with detail. It all depends on the situation, obviously. Okay, let's just do the brackets underneath. Obviously, my um, little clamp here um, is clamped to something that I need to paint in this grey as well. So, take the clamp off in a sec, but right now it's quite handy to have it where it is. Trying not to paint the areas where we're going to put glue. There's a little pip here sticking out which seems to be associated with whatever's going on the top of there. So I just want to uh, pick that out as well. You can hear the rain. It's Friday morning and uh, it's quite wet and miserable. Must be the weekend coming along. Well, that's now hailstones. And I'm going to call that done. Let's have a closer look at it. 